Hello and welcome to Scots United, where I, Scott, and my team of Scots, who are also me, bring you the latest in movies, television, and popular culture. This week, we're talking about two movies, so let's start with Little Women. Written and directed by Greta Gerwig. Um, you know, it's like the 27th retelling. I mean, who's who, who can count? However, it's really great. 27 seems a little high. What's strange to me is that I don't know that Sir Ronan, as great as she is, stands out so much as the whole thing. Like, I love the feel of it. I love the structure. Um, rather than just be, being told linear, linearly, you know, they're young and then they get older, she starts with, um, with Joe in New York writing. And instead, though, Greta, like, she parallels lots of moments. She wants to show a moment from youth as compared to them as an adult. You know, show their growth, show how they handle things differently, show how the world is different, circumstances are different. Um, it's a much smarter, I think a more interesting way, and I think it has more of a comment or more of like a, because cert, more of a comment, I, that's, that's accurate, because I think like certainly Greta Gerwig researched Louisa May Alcott, the, the writer of Little Women herself, and infused more of her own life into Joe. How so? It's it's a little bit meta. She's Greta Gerwig is intentionally wanting to compare moments, compare characters, and just draw your eye to certain things. It's sort of making it more of a like a, an obvious film, but not obvious like oh it's so obvious, but like like the con the construct of the film is something Greta Gerwig wants you to see, and I think that's interesting because you could just tell a linear story. And want to you know get your audience swept up in it, and that's enough. Um, there's been some people picking at at an end detail that I don't want to spoil, but I but it's because it's based off of how it, the book was published. It was published in two parts, and the publisher essentially insisted on a certain thing happening by the end that Louisa May Alcott didn't want to have happen. So a bit of that is in there too. Florence Pugh has had a hell of a year. We reviewed Midsummer. She was fantastic in that. Oh, the screaming and the flowers. Grief, grief. Yes, yes. And now she's in this role as Amy, playing Amy as a young you know, girl and as the more m mature Amy, which she does seeming, you know, seamlessly. Um, it really gives Amy more to do and more. The, the movie does, and Florence Pugh just infuses so much there's a really delightful, wonderful, powerful speech she gives about just a woman's place at that time and options. Um, but she's not the only one. Eliza Scanlon was so fierce and scary and sharp objects on HBO. And she's so sweet as Beth. Who else? And then you have Meryl. Then you got Chris Cooper. You know, Laura Dern, who I really adore, period, and in this as Marmy. Um, and... We cannot not speak about Timothy Chalamet, who's just dreamy, but also quirky. And, and I like that. It, Laurie isn't just sort of like the, the dream boat uh, or the, the, the guy they all like. He's also a little bit rough around the edges, a little bit weird, which I think is probably closer to Timothy Chalamet, but in a good way. Um, but it all works. Come on, there's something else. Hit me. And Louis Garrel plays uh, Friedrich and yeah, he's, he's Frencher than he would have been in the book, but uh, I'm not complaining. <laughs> mm. It's just super tight. It's just super well done. It looks gorgeous. It made me feel wistful about New England, even during the winter, which takes a lot for me to feel that way. Um, so definitely a recommendation, a real, a real recommendation and certainly a movie that I, and um, I'm assured in my mind will be in the top 10 of the year. Top 10, heard it here first. And uh, that list, of course, is still under you know, in development. But uh, now we're going to talk about another movie. This one's available on Netflix, so you can watch it from home. So what you've heard is true. Marriage Story, which I have occasionally accidentally called Wedding Story, which is not. Marriage Story, new movie by Noah Baumbach, would maybe more accurately be called Divorce Story because it really does center around the divorce between Scarlett Johansson's character and Adam Driver's character. 
Adam Driver, what isn't he in these days? Although same can be said for Scarlett Johansson. They are both excellent. Um, I have to say though, it probably does feel more like Adam Driver's story, which is not surprising since, you know, certainly this was inspired a bit by Noam Baumbach. I think he said it's not an autobiographical movie, but it's a personal movie. He was previously married to... Jennifer Jason Lee, and they had a son together. Now he's currently partnered with Greta Gerwig, and they have a fairly newborn son, or newish son. Um, she was pregnant when she was directing Little Women, secretly. Anyways, I mean, Adam Driver puts together a really powerful, layered performance, and he's just really good. I mean, it's why he's everywhere. Um, but Scarlett's great, too. And, of course, we have to talk about Laura Dern. Speaking of everywhere, and obviously the subject of our episode tonight, I'm never upset to see Laura Dern. She joked when she won the Golden Globe that, you know, it was what was missing in the world was a nuanced performance a portrayal of a divorce lawyer. But she's not wrong, and that's really the strength of the whole movie. It's, it's very clear, at least it was to me, I thought, that Noah Baumbach did not want to take sides. He really wanted to show good and ugly sides to everybody. Even the divorce lawyers, like in the hall, they're like talking about vacations and, and you know, social, and then in the courtroom, they're at each other the way that they're paid to be. And I think that scene kind of crystallized a lot of the movie. That like, everyone's kind of messy. Sorry, I got too windy here. So what Scott was talking about was how the movie really does a really good job of not pitting anybody as a villain. It really tries to show everyone um, from both sides, from their, their ugly moments, their bad habits, the, the things that maybe they're not great about or things they did in the past that weren't great, but also how they are a good person and how they try to be a good person and how that's messy. You know, like you aren't supposed to like somebody anymore because your sister or your daughter is divorcing him, but it doesn't mean that you don't, you know, and that's life. And that's, I think, realistic. So there's a lot there and it's really, I mean, it is speechy at times and it does feel like a play. Um, but it's Noah Baumbach. I mean, he's a, a talky director. I mean, that's what his movies are about, people and emotions and talking. So another movie with great performances, great film all around. Any final thoughts? And once again, one of the best movies of the year. So that's it for us this week. Thank you for joining us. We will be back again next week. Uh, we've already banked another uh, film viewing, 1917. So come back next week to hear more about that and we'll have something else for you as well. So have a good week, and we'll see you soon.